healed me. I, I began to meditate upon the fact that him and his word are one. God gave me another. You know, the Bible says in 1 John 4, uh, 4 I believe, it, as he is, so are we in this earth. Me and Sister Donald was talking about the other day. Guess what? As he is, he is not sick. And as he is, so am I in this earth. And guess what? I'm not supposed to be sick either. Amen. Right? I begin to confess. Well, guess what? I was doing everything I was told, and there was nothing wrong at all with what I was told. That is the foundation stone of my life. But how many of you know that you're supposed to keep moving in God? Right. Yes, sir. And I stopped. I mean, if the <coughs> didn't say that, I didn't, God had spoken. Some of you have stopped. You, you, you come to a place where you know this and that's all you think you're supposed to know. God is unsearchable. Amen. Amen. You think, I know the Bible. You don't know, oh, no, no. Every time you open the book, it's supposed to be a new book. Amen. There's new revelation every day. Hallelujah. But what I needed was a God encounter. So I remember, now I didn't hear an audible voice. He didn't knock me down to the ground, but He helped me. He came into my life and I was miserable. I wasn't backslidden. I wasn't in sin. But I was miserable. Some of you get miserable in church and you start blaming the church for your problems. You're miserable because God wants to move you into something else. Not change churches, not change everything you believe, but bring you into a fresh new revelation of who He is. And I didn't know that at that time. So I remember, man, I'm laying there and God came and His presence got real strong on me. How many ever felt that? He just comes. Sometime I'm up here, I touch my wife, and I, I just nearly fall out because the presence of God's a person strong. She'd be drunk in the spirit. Oh, and his presence came on real strong. I remember laying back on that bunk, and I said, God, I don't know what's happening, Father. I said, I feel like I'm backsliding. I said, I don't know. Everything that I used to do that brought such peace and such joy, it just doesn't seem to do anything anymore. And, I, and out of my spirit, it wasn't me, how many of you know God speaks out of your, out of your belly yeah. shall flow what? Rivers yeah. of living water. How many of you know God speaks to you? He'll speak to you out of your own belly sometimes. Yeah. God spoke to me. Out of my own belly, I heard this word. I said, Father, I give you permission. Now, God, you said, God don't need permission. I know that. But I said, I said, God, I give you permission. Do whatever you need to do, but bring me back to you. And what did he do? He sent a red-haired, spirit-filled, captive woman into my life, into that prison. She began to share with us who would walk in there. She was educated. She, she was uh, uh, had her own psychiatric uh, business, uh, office, not business. She was over Tallapoosa County Mental Health. But this woman was sold out to Jesus. And she came in that prison, stood up there, and was drunk in the spirit. So drunk she could hardly stand up. And preaching, I mean, words coming out of her mouth that were foreign to me, except they were coming out of the Bible, but it was a different Bible than I'd ever heard. Because, see, I, I had the Word of Faith Bible. Some of y'all got a Church of God Bible. Some of y'all got an Assembly of God Bible. Some of y'all were really spiritual. You got your charismatic Bible. <laughs> I'm telling you something. There ain't no Bible like that. All that Bible is is the Word of the living God. And it's the word of the living God. And any time you drop your denomination or you drop your theology inside that word, you limit the power of the word of God. Amen. What she was preaching was right out of the book. But because I had got... Now, it wasn't the fault of the people that were teaching me. What they were teaching me was holy, just, right, and good. But I had digested that. God wanted to give me another meal. And I was ready. I was ready now. It took me about two or three weeks going down there and getting mad at that woman every time I saw her because you know what? She looked like she was happy and she was full of joy. And I wasn't as miserable. <laughs> she had something. She had the Holy Ghost all over her. She, had, she felt God. And man, let me tell you something. My word of faith experience at that time, I didn't have to feel God. I had the Word of God. I went by the Word. I didn't go by my feelings. Now I found out a little later on that Brother Hagin got drunk with the best of them. <laughs> I didn't know that. I hadn't seen the video at that time. Right? I thought, I just read the books. I thought Brother Hagin didn't have any emotions whatsoever. Come find it. He had a lot of them. But man, when I saw that, I kept going back, going back. What was I having? I was having a God encounter. I was having a God encounter. And I'll never forget the day I went to that woman. This is going to sound crazy to you. If you're not a spiritual person, I can't even believe I said this. To this day, this sounds so stupid to say. But this woman, see, it was a spirit connection. She knew exactly what I meant. 
all at once after trying to show this woman how smart I was and her showing me how dumb I was, I finally figured out she knew stuff I didn't know. And I wanted to know it. So I listen to this word, y'all. Humbled myself. Amen. You want to go somewhere in God, you're going to have to humble yes, sir. yourself. Yes. You want to have a God encounter, you're going to have to humble yourself. I humbled myself. And I went to this woman and I said, uh, Miss Ricky Back, that's her name. I said, well, I call her Sister Ricky. I said, you got something I don't have. And from now on, I'm going to, it sounds so stupid. <laughs> I said, I'm going to come to you like a little bird with my mouth open, and I want you to drop the worm tail. Now, she, she could have laughed at me. Don't that sound stupid? No. She knew exactly what I meant. From that point on, she started feeding me. She bring me books, bring me CDs and DVDs, and introduced me to the prophetic movement. You know, introduced me to people, you know, like who the CI guy and, and Rick Joyner and, and all these prophetic folks, Bob Jones, opened up a, another layer of the Word of God. Let me tell you something. From that point on, though, I've never stopped going after the layers. Praise God. Now, did I throw any of those people out? No. Absolutely not. Every one of them. I still love Brother Hayden. I still love the, the prophetic. But all those things are just steps on the journey to get us into a God encounter. Because five seconds in the presence of God can teach you more than I can teach you in seven years <laughs> sitting here preaching. Ain't that right? Just encountering and being in His presence. You'll never forget that voice. You'll never forget what you saw. I'll never forget laying back on that ball. I mean, it is as fresh as, as anything in my life. I still remember. I feel the sheets on my back when I lay back on that ball and say, God, I give you permission, whatever you've got to do, turn this around. But God immediately encountered me. He does that. Get anything out of this? Amen. 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 Sister, I see you doing sign for her. I see you signing for her. Would it be easier for you if you came up here and she could face you? You okay? Okay, good. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know you was doing that. We would have got you a better place. I appreciate you doing that. Go with me to uh, back to Genesis. <coughs> He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. 
Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his heel, and the socket of Jacob's heel was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, so it is right. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he says, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Denial. If you look that up, it means the face of God. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over the canal, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his heel. Therefore this day the children of Israel do not eat the muscle, that, the muscle, that shank, which is on, on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle of that shank. Now let's look at that. How many has ever wrestled with God? I'll never forget, I heard T.D. Jakes preach a message about wrestling with God years ago. I've never forgotten it. You know how we, we just wrestle with God. But in the midst of wrestling with God, you know, he's, he, he comes to this realization. You know, there's a place where you get so hungry, and Steve, I believe that's what's going on with you, so desperate for God that you just get to a place you say, you know what? I'm not moving. I'm not going to leave until you bless me. Until you show up, I'm not, I'm not going to let go of this place. You know, some people, uh, what was her name, Dottie Rambo? Is that the singer? Yes. Is that the lady? If I'm telling this, if I'm attributing this testimony to her, then, then forgive me. It's one of those gospel singing ladies, all I know. I heard her testimony, and I think it was her. She she'd been on the road doing her thing, you know, for God for a long time. She got to a place where things in her life weren't quite where they needed to be. And she was desperate for God. And she said she just went out in the country to a house, an old house, and she said she walked up to a wall and she said, God. She faced the wall and she said, God, I'm not going to leave until you show up. She said, if I die here, I'll not move until you show up. And she meant, to the core of her being, she meant, how I many you know God? Sometimes we, we have to stand and stand until we get to the place where we really mean it. But she meant it. <laughs> and it didn't take them long. After about an hour, God showed up. In a life changing God encounter. Right. Reset the destiny of your life. How many of you know you think some of you think your life is set? You think you got this thing figured out? You think you know which direction you're going? I'm gonna tell you something. God's about to reset some lives. Thank you. God's about to change some destiny. God's about to redirect some things into a higher place than you've ever experienced. Oh, yes. You know, you say, Brother Lee, you don't know what's going on in my life. Let me tell you something. I know, I know God now. I walked with it a little while. God starts stripping you before He promotes you. Yes, sir. He really Try does. It. Revelation don't promote you. Revelation might get you ready. But what gets you ready for promotion is the stripping of God. Yes, sir. God comes in and begins to cut away things in your life. Yes, sir. God begins to take you down to a place where you know you cannot succeed without Him. The, the Word. The Word. Without me, you can do nothing. Before God brings you into promotion, He will bring you into a place where you know you cannot do anything without Him. As a church, you know what we've been experiencing? Preparation for promotion. Amen. Because by now, if you hadn't figured it out, we can do nothing Amen. without God. Amen. There is nothing flesh can do to build this house. Amen. There is not, not one, there's not a, a, a new sound, not a new instrument, not a better speaker, not a better preacher. It's nothing except God stripping you in a place where you understand emphatically you can't do nothing without me. The only draw that makes this church worth going to is if He comes. Amen. Him and Him alone. Right? So God brings you to that place just like Jacob where without if God don't show up, Esau was coming to kill him. Esau
Esau had every right to kill him. He robbed Esau. He took a lot, if you want to get down to brass tacks, he took a lot of money from Esau. When he, when he sold Esau, he uh, stole that birthright, he took two-thirds of the inheritance from him that belonged to him. Amen. And then he took the blessing. And let me tell you something, Esau, might have, he might have despised his birthright, but he wanted that blessing. Remember how he wept bitterly yes. for the blessing? He wept, my father, my father. Read it, boy, it's heartbreaking. My father, my father, did you not reserve any blessing, any blessing for me? Do you not yet have a blessing for me? And fortunately, he had a blessing for him. There's a God encounter coming. You're headed toward a God encounter. Hallelujah. Jacob is in a place of desperation. God shows up, but Jacob is not ready for the promotion. He has to wrestle with God. Why are you ready for it? Why isn't he ready? He's desperate. Desperation is not enough. Jacob has always been able to connive and get what he wanted on his own. He was smart. He was a deceiver. He was a trickster. So right in the middle of the wrestling, you know, this guy figures out, God figures out, this guy's not going to let me go. And he hits him on the hip. He strikes his flesh. Your flesh is not your flesh is not your soma. This body is called soma in the Greek. Flesh is sarks. He, he touched his soma, but what God's going to touch is your sarks. That your strength, your mind, your will, your emotions, your ability to do what you think you can do without God. Yes. That's where you're going to live. He had to take that from him. And watch how he does it. Right in the middle of wrestling. He won't let it go. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What's God say? What's your name? What's your name? That breaks my heart. What's your name? <laughs> you know what Jacob has to say? See, your name means something. Yes. Jacob didn't just say, when he said I'm Jacob, he didn't just say Jacob. He came face to face with who he was. Yes. He said, I'm a deceiver. I'm a trickster. I'm a supplant. I'm a denier. I've cheated my way through life. I even made a deal with you the first time I met you. I mean, you know, that's what he did. He said, I even made you have to show up and prove yourself to me. I said, if you're my God. He came to the end of himself. Then God says, ah, you're no longer a deceiver. You're no longer a conniver. <laughs> You're no longer a supplanter. From this point on, you are a prince with God. Yes. For you have wrestled with God and man, and you have prevailed. Hallelujah. You're headed toward a God encounter. You're headed toward a God encounter. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to change things so dramatically. Yes. It's almost going to be like He's going to change your name. Hallelujah. But in it, you encounter you. See, when God shows up, you have to encounter you. Oh, yeah. See, I think I'm a pretty good old boy. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> yeah. But boy, when you come face to face with the living God, all that stuff shows up. Does God do that because He hates you? Does God do that, do, do that because He's angry at you? No, God does that so He can change you. Yes, sir. This is what you were. But now you've had an encounter with me. And now I'm making you something different. The day you got born again, He wasn't through making you a new creation. That was just the beginning of the new creation. God is taking you into a deeper, deeper place than you've ever been before. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a few minutes here and let's wait upon the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat>